She's the one that walks around the store. She's the one that gets more and more. Vincent Eugene Craddock grew up in Norfolk, Virginia and started playing guitar when he was 12. In 1952, after the Korean War broke out, he enlisted in the U.S. Navy where he would entertain his fellow servicemen by playing guitar and singing country tunes. In July 1955, Vincent suffered a serious injury to his leg. The cause of the injury is unknown since the story differed over the years, with Jean saying it resulted from either a motorcycle accident or a combat wound. The injury would bother him his entire career and influenced his trademark stage pose. It was painful, putting my weight on one leg so I can hold it there and do the act for my audience that they paid to see. I must give them my best no matter how I feel. Gene Vincent won a performing spot on a local radio station thanks to his uncanny covers of Elvis Presley songs. Vincent also sang a song he'd written himself, Bebop Alula, which would become a classic in the rockabilly genre. Well, Bebop Alula was entered into a, a contest, actually Capital was having, you see, and um, I was entered into the contest uh, by the radio station I was working for at the time, and uh, it won. Vincent formed a band called the Blue Caps and followed Bebop Baluba with a string of hits including Lot of Lovin', Race with the Devil, Dance to the Bop, and Blue Jean Bop. In 1956, Vincent appeared in an early rock and roll film, The Girl Can't Help It. You sing a mean song, man. Oh, well, thank you, Gene. With Little Richard, Fats Domino, and Eddie Cochran. Like his friend Eddie Cochran, Vincent embodied the image of rebellion. His look would inspire the style of 70s punk rock. Yeah, I wear black leather. Uh, I drink, smoke, cuss, and go out with women. Vincent traveled the world promoting hits like Baby Blue. Baby, 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 baby. In 1960, Vincent was seriously hurt in the same car crash outside London that killed Eddie Cochran. A few years later, he moved to the UK and formed another band, which went on to play with the Beatles at their Shea Stadium concert. Vincent's fame waned during the mid-60s and he developed a serious problem with alcohol, although he still managed to maintain a rigorous tour schedule. This is a long, very lonesome life. It's the most lonesome life in the world. When, when you're not um, actually rehearsing or singing, you, it's just a very lonesome life when you're on the road. At the end of it, you get so you can't stand it anymore and you have to go home, you know. But uh, this is just the thing people go through, you know, part of the business. In 1968, in a hotel in Germany, Vincent tried to shoot Gary Glitter. He fired several shots and missed. Some would say it's unfortunate that Vincent's aim wasn't better. He goes to his little bedside table, he pulls out a pistol. We're going, see you, Gene. Yeah. That's never. it, man. You <laughs> sort this out. Yeah. In 1971, while visiting his parents in California, Vincent tripped and ruptured a stomach ulcer. He was taken to the hospital, where he died on October 12, 1971, at the age of 36. Gene Vincent was buried at Eternal Valley Memorial Park in Los Angeles, California. Vincent was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1998. The previous year, he became the first inductee into the Rockabilly Hall of Fame. While these are great honors, they are not necessary for his fans to remember the monumental talent of this pioneering artist who was gone too soon. Thank you for tuning in. Please don't forget to subscribe and to like the video below.